Foxy was in a church, Lighthouse Baptist Church, Clone Wars, no, no, COVID Wars. Welcome to our live stream. Everything is up and working. We are super duper, uber glad you're here. Um, we are going to have our charades. If you're on right now, the one person that's probably on or nobody that's probably on, that person that's not on, call that other person that's not on and tell them, Get on and join us. Uh, we are excited about being here and starting. So, without any further, Miss Lily is now allowed to participate. So, if you can guess after, let's say, 10 seconds, if nobody's on, I guess that's right. All right, so, Ms. Clement. I don't know how to fix my phone. Oh, there you go. All right, so this is Bible character. Oh, do you have a way to time yourself? All right, here we go. Wesley doesn't either. Do you hear that? He has no way of timing. That's a blessing. All right, so these are Bible characters, and Miss Candy is going to shout out the answers on Instagram, oh, not Instagram, on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. Lily's going to shout out the answers of the zero people that are on, on Instagram. So, yes, very much so. All right, go ahead. So these are Bible characters. Yes, yes, shout it out if they, in the back sound booth, just shout it out. Noah, thank you. There was two animals, and I was flooding in the rain. Floods came up, come on, people. That was actually mixing up the Jesus's, anyways. The rain came down, and the floods came, and the house on. Okay. Yes, Samson, you people online, now you do have to wait 10 seconds because they can't get it in 10 seconds later. But after 10 seconds, you can guess <coughs> from now on. All right, so Samson. Hi, Marissa. Um, yes, you do. Uh, okay, these are all bi Bible characters. If you don't get these, I'll know what I'm going to be preaching on in the next six months. You think this is draining every a all live stream. Okay. <laughs> all right, next one. Come on, people, this is easy. <sighs> You're close, but no. I mean, no, King David. King, king, the, the crown. I'm a king. Oh, because he was young and... You know, a little boy, three, five, wh whatever. Critics, all right.
I'm acting. <laughs> sure. Delilah. That was pretty easy. How many more of these? This last one? Last one. I know the name. Okay, I'm going to take a little hint from the tour guide. Oh, okay, all right, got it. All right, you tell me when to go. I didn't even know who this was. No one's going to guess it. <laughs> Time. Okay. ASAP. Anybody know who that is in this room? Who was it? Brother Miller? It is the chief musician, I think, or so says my wife says in the Psalms. Psalms. Asaph is the chief musician, so no, he can say it. Oh, Chelsea! Hello. I said hello. Hello. I said hello to Marissa. And who else? Katie. Probably the only three people that are going to watch me, but hi. I'm saying hello. Uh, turn in your Bibles to first, who said hi? Chelsea, what's up? Um, so turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter number 5. We're going to go the very last part of chapter 5 we'll end with tonight. Um, Monday night we did the first part of 1 John chapter 5. We're going to finish up 1 John chapter number 5 today. Um, we're going to use some of these super cool things that my wife let me borrow. But 1 John chapter 5 tonight, and uh, I want to encourage you with the announcements that I've been telling everybody Spend an hour with Jesus every day. That would be 15 minutes of prayer, 15 minutes of Bible reading and or studying, 15 minutes of Bible memory work, and last but not least, 15 minutes of listening to the Word of God. There are some passages in Scripture that say we get a special blessing um, to those that would hear um, the Word of God, so make sure you do that. Also, teenagers, get on board with sharing your one-minute testimony um, video it, record it, post it to your social media with the hashtag me and MVLBC. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, take a video of you sharing what that was like, put it on your social media, and then hashtag it me and MVLBC. They're starting to come one and two and one and two and one two. It's been very, very good. So get on board, teenagers. Let's be a good example in that way. It's one way we can share a testimony now. And I've been enjoying In fact, our family, whenever a new one comes on, our family sits in the living room, we plug in my phone to the TV and watch it, and it's just been a great blessing to hear how uh, God has changed lives and saved souls. Um, also, I want to share a prayer request. We'll share this with uh, the adults here in a little bit, but uh, one of our missionaries, Clint Munich, he was working and had an accident. He got some glass in his eye. Um, they went to have surgery just this last week. We're not able to take the glass out. Um, did some other things, and so it's postponed, and he's probably going to lose, um, he'll probably permanently blind in his eyes, so that it says the doctors anyway, so be in prayer for Clint Munich, and he is a pastor, pastor in 29 Palms, so please be in prayer for that man, you might not know who he is, but uh, still pray for him. Also, I wanted to share some encouragement, and uh, encourage you guys to do this too, if you're bored and at home, and don't have anything to do, which most of you are, we are doing something for our city every other week. We are delivering meals to shut-ins, elderly, those that are high risk, 
Um, we're helping Moval Meals. And I just want to share a blessing of that. I was getting my car smog today, which was always an experience. And I brought it in. I have my same smog guy that I've been using. And as I was paying for it, he said, hey, by the way, your church delivered um, a meal, some food to my mother-in-law. And I thought, well, I don't know. It could have been, there's other people do it. So I thought, well, maybe he, he said, no, uh, you, we have one of your cards. I know it was you. And it was such a great blessing to know that our church was able to do that. So our church is getting known. They're doing some things. So um, please get involved with that. If you don't have anything to do, we deliver. We'll deliver again next week. So um, we pick it up on Wednesday and start delivering on Wednesday and Thursday. So if you want to do that, be in part. Tell your parents, hey, I want to get out and help in that ministry. It's one thing we can do. So First John chapter 5. We'll begin with prayer, and we'll also begin with verse number 13, 1 John 5, 13. Um, we'll read our first verse here, pray and get started. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Father in heaven, Lord, I do pray that you would uh, speak to those that are not saved. Father, I pray that you would speak to those that are saved, do a mighty work, bind the devil, uh, put the distractions aside. Thank you for this opportunity. I pray, God, that you would just uh, help me to be filled with your Holy Spirit. I'm excited about this message, Lord, I was, as I was studying today and been thinking about this for several weeks. Uh, Lord, I pray that your word will be lifted up and you'll be glorified tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So our theme tonight, if you want to have a message, a theme, what would it be? It would be what the children of God know, what the children of God know. And we're going to look at seven things Seven things that the children of God know and a bonus. At the very end, you're going to get a bonus information. So seven things that the children of God know. Um, we just read verse number 13, which says, These things that are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The first thing that the children of God know is that they have eternal life. If you are a child of God, Verse 13 says, you can know that you have eternal life because you've placed your faith in the Son of God. You will live forever. And I'm, I'm going to quote a whole bunch of verses um, to you, starting in Matthew and working all the way down, probably, I think we get to Romans. But Matthew chapter number 9, verse number 29, all of these verses, by the way, are going to deal with you are going to have eternal life if you place your faith in Jesus Christ alone. They're talking about having everlasting life. See, according to the Bible, the moment you bow your knee before God, the moment you confess you're a sinner and trust in the God of the Bible, that's what John is dealing with here. What do we believe about the Bible? That very moment, you get everlasting life and it lasts forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and you can never lose it. Um, that's the whole idea of everlasting. So Matthew 19, verse number 29, Matthew 19, verse 29 says this, And everyone that forsaketh houses or brethren or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. John 3.16, probably most of you know this one. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then John 3, verse number 36, just a few verses down, 336 says this, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son hath not seen life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. We're going to look at all these places telling us that the moment we believe, the moment we trust in Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. John 4, 14. John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. That, what a wonderful thing, that you would never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up unto everlasting life. God's going to give us everlasting life, and that life comes when we believe on him. John 5 now, in verse number 24. John 5, in verse number 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words, and look what he says, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, 
but is passed from death unto life. If you have your Bible, I've tried to do this. I don't always do it all the time, but I try to lay out scriptures. If I'm going to read a bunch of them, kind of starting where the, the furthest one away is and working your Bible so you don't have to go back and forth. That's not always the case, but I do try to do that. So the next one is in John chapter number 6. John 6 and verse number 40. Again, he says, we're going to have everlasting life. John 6, 40. And this, will I, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him hath everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Now John chapter 6, verse number 46, just a few verses down. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Hopefully you're getting the idea here that the children of God know that they have everlasting life. John 10, verse number 28. John 10 and verse number 28. And the Bible says this. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And now I'm going to read a bunch more of these. You can write the scriptures down. Um, but Romans 6, 22 says this. But now being made free from sin and become servants unto God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Galatians 6, 8 says this. Galatians 6, 8 says, For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 16. 1 Timothy 1, 16. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first... Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern of them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. The moment we believe in Jesus Christ, we get everlasting life. And I just the error I grew up in, I almost always think of when I hear everlasting life, I think of Willy Wonka and the everlasting gobstopper. That is what I think about almost every time because it never, never goes away. Well, the same is true with everlasting life. You get it, God gives it to you, and it lasts forever and ever and ever. So number one, the ch our children of God know that they have everlasting life or eternal life. They know that they have eternal life. Now go to 1 John. If you've been turning your Bible, go back to 1 John. Or 1 John will always go back to that. 1 John chapter number 5, verse number 14. So children of God know that they have eternal life. Verse 14 this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Secondly, children of God know when they pray according to God's will, their prayers are answered. Uh, he says this is our confidence right here. That we can know, teenagers, you can absolutely confidently know that when you pray to God, your prayers will be answered. God says when we pray according to his will, our petitions that we desire of him are answered. Uh, sometimes some people might uh, almost take that and to a far extreme and think, oh man, I don't know what God's will is, so I'm not going to pray because I don't know what God's will is. Listen, the idea is that John's giving us confidence you can know your prayers are answered. Know the will of God and pray in the will of God. John's trying to give these Christians some confidence. He says, listen, if you ask anything in God's will, it will be answered. Jesus himself taught his disciples to, to pray according to the will of God. Matthew 7, verse number 7 through 11. Matthew 7, and I was thinking about this, 7, 11. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and him that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or that man there is of you whom a son asketh bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? So if you have a child, you, if you're a child, and you have a parent or someone that you live with, if you ask for, him a, a, uh, for bread, are you going to give him a stone to eat? Um, honestly, my parents might have done that <laughs> when I was younger. Uh, but God is giving us an example here. He's saying, listen, look at what he says in verse 11. If ye then, being evil, all mankind are evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Look at what it says. 
how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give you good things to them that ask him? Listen, teenagers, ask. Be confident when you're coming to God. John is teaching us that Christians, children of God, have confidence when they pray that their prayers will be answered when they pray according to God's will. Hebrews 4, verse number 15 and 16 says this, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Listen, there is a bunch of people, probably millions, perhaps even trillions of people, that right now need help. They want the grace of God in their life. They want the mercy of God in their life. There's teenagers I know in our church that they need God's grace. They're gone through uh, maybe some hard and difficult times with loss of a loved one, or, or maybe they're going through a schooling situation that's not good, or maybe they've never had a parent that would do good to them. Well, you know what John says, have confidence. If you're a child of God, God who's much better than we are, says come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. We're in a time of need. So come to the Lord God and ask confidently. Stay in God's will. Pray in God's will and be confident in your prayers. Stay in God's will. Pray in God's will and be confident when you pray. Children of God know that they have eternal life. Children of God know that when they pray according to God's will, their prayers are answered. 1 John 5, verse number 16. If any man see his brother sin, a sin that is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin unto death. We're not going to cover a lot of this, but understand there is a sin unto death. And there is a sin. There's a point in which a Christian can go so far in their wickedness and not listen to God that God will take them home to him in heaven. Verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked, wicked one toucheth him not. We're looking at all these passages of things that we can know. And this next one, number three, children of God know that they are sinless. Children of God know that they are sinless. Listen, when you get saved, the only reason you get to go to heaven is because you're made sinless. You are actually made perfect in God's eyes. At the moment of salvation, God wipes away all of our sins. He clothes us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and you are made sinless. That's what you know. That's what you're told. And perhaps maybe you didn't know that exactly, verbiage and phrasage, but perhaps you heard something like, God will save you and take you to heaven. Well, the reason he saves you and takes you to heaven is because he makes you perfect and clean. You are actually sinless. You're made perfect in God's eyes in heaven. However, children of God that are sinless in God's eyes also sin less. So those that have been made sinless, justified perfect in God's eyes, will sin less and less and less and less and less. The child of God, if you are saved, this is what's going to happen. You are going to have God forgive all your sins, past, present, and futures. But what you also will happen is every day as you grow, little by little, you will sin less and less and less. In fact, there's a promise, and John deals with this. This is what John's talking about in 1 John that a Christian, a true born-again believer that trusts in God, will actually not stay in perpetual, continual sin. That's not what Christians will do. They'll get out of sin. They'll sin less and less and less. At salvation, now these are some words that maybe you've heard before, justification and sanctification. That's a theme throughout this book. At salvation, we are declared righteous and sinless before God. At the same time, the child of God is in the process of keeping himself from sin. This theme is seen throughout the Bible. We are justified once for all time. This justification leads to daily sanctification. William Evans puts it this way. Justification is what God does for us while sanctification is what God does in us. Justification, when you pray and ask God to save you, 
You're born again. Your sins are forgiven. It's forever. That's what God did for you. He just forgave all your sins. Sanctification is when God comes inside you and helps you to daily overcome more and more sins. Justification is what God does for us, while sanctification is what God does in us. Number four, if you're following along, number four, children of God know that the wicked one touches them not. Children of God know that the wicked one touches them not. The word toucheth has the idea of continually holding on to you. When you get saved, Satan no longer has a binding hold on you. He cannot touch the children of God. There's lots of things that flood to my mind about this. The the example of Job in the Bible. We know that um, in the example of Job, Satan wanted to hurt Job, but yet he couldn't because God was protecting him, and so he had to go to God and say, hey, can I... Um, can I um, persecute Job because he'll curse you? You can look up the story. Well, Satan cannot touch the children of God. He cannot. He has nothing to hold on to. Um, 1 John 4, 4 says this year, this is the same chapter or same book, just a chapter before, 1 John 4, 4. Year of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Romans 6 and verse number 12. Romans 6 and verse number 12 says this, actually 12 and 13. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bottles, bodies, bottles, in your mortal bodies that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of unrighteousness or of righteousness, rather, unto God. When you get saved, God gives you the power to overcome the wicked one. Satan can no longer have a binding hold on you. You have all the power in the world to defeat the devil. Um, Many of you might be living in sin or struggling with sin. Listen, if you're saved, Satan can't touch you. He has no power of you. By the way, Satan, in, in context, talking about everlasting life, there is nothing that Satan can do that can take your everlasting life away from you. Otherwise, it's not everlasting. There is no sin that Satan can um, tempt you with that if you were to fall into that sin would take away your everlasting life. He can't touch you. He cannot take away your everlasting life. Nothing he can do can take away. He, He cannot spiritually muster up enough power to somehow zap you out of heaven or keep you from heaven. He cannot touch you. So the four things we've learned so far... Children of God know that they have eternal life. Children of God, secondly, know that when they pray according to God's will, their prayers are answered. That gives us much confidence. Thirdly, children of God know that they are sinless. They're made perfect in God's eyes, and then they sin less and less and less. Fourthly, children of God know that the wicked one cannot touch them. Fifthly, verse number 19 of 1 John 5, verse number 19 says this, and we know, again, all these things that we know, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Fifthly, children of God know that they are of God and that the world is wicked. Children of God know that they are of God and the whole world, and that the world is wicked. Children of God know that they are of God and that the world is wicked. The whole world is consumed by Surrounded by, driven by, controlled by, blinded by, and probably a whole bunch of other things by wickedness. This world, teenagers, is wicked. The entire world is. At the moment of the fall, when Adam and Eve got told, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because the day of you, you'll surely die. When they did that, sin entered into the world wickedness entered into the world and it will stay in the world until the world is destroyed there is wickedness in the world everything that the world runs by it runs on and by and through wickedness the whole world lies in wickedness that's why it's so careful that maybe you have hear some preaching about some things you ought not listen to and you ought not pay attention one reason i'm trying to encourage you to spend an hour with jesus every day Because the world you are living in, teenagers, and the world you are consuming with your eyes on the internet and whatever it might be, is all wicked. Our leaders are wicked. We are wicked. The things that are coming out on on TV, they're they're wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness. And as a child of God, you need to understand, John is trying to get these people to understand, 
the world lieth in wickedness, but you're a child of God. We ought to be different than the world. We ought to be the light of the world. He wanted these Christians to be the light in a dark world. He wanted them to be the righteousness in a wicked world. So understand, teenagers, just in your mind, understand that this world is wicked. It's uh, the prince of this world, the world, ruler of this wicked world is Satan. So Satan definitely has an agenda. And these things that are happening, the coronavirus, they didn't take God by surprise. He knows he's all powerful. But understand that Satan definitely has used them. And you would be naive to not think that. Um, children of God know that they are of God and that the world is wicked. Understand that we live in a wicked world. Verse number 20, 1 John 5, verse number 20. We're almost there. Number six is coming right up. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we might know him that is true and that we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Number six, children of God know Jesus Christ is come. Children of God know Jesus Christ is come. There are some people, the Jewish nation by far and large, has said that their Messiah has never come. They're still waiting for the Messiah. But if you're a child of God, you understand that 2,000 or so years ago, Jesus Christ came to this world. In fact, that's what John is combating at this time. There are people that maybe believe that Jesus was not actually 100% man and 100% God. They kind of rejected the, um, that Jesus was human. But God, he was the God man, 100% man, 100% God. Um, Jesus has come. And if you're a child of God, you believe that Jesus was a virgin born son of God, a human just like me. Um, he lived, he walked, breathed, had blood. When he fell down, it hurt. He scratched himself, all those things. If you're a child of God, you know that he has come. Seventhly, I don't think seventhly is a word, but set, number seven. Children of God know that Jesus is the means by which we know truth. Seventhly, or number seven, children of God know that Jesus is the means by which we know truth. God is true, and everything that is contrary to God is a lie. Jesus has given us a wonderful filter or lens by which we can know truth and error. We have a limited understanding, and sometimes what we think is true is really a lie. But God knows truth from error. Everything that is not from God and agrees with God is error. It's a lie. When we receive Jesus, Jesus gives us a tool, an understanding by which we can know truth from error. I wish right now I honestly could know truth from error. Uh, if you are on the internet, it's just I'm about sick and tired of watching things because who do you believe? What do you believe? How bad is the coronavirus? How bad is not coronavirus? How many people was it actually because of coronavirus or was it because of something else? Did the doctors lie? Did they not lie? Um, are all these people, is this the Antichrist uh, starting his one world reign? There's a lot of things we don't know, but you know what God did? He gave us Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the lens, is the filter by which we understand truth and error. So I have these two, actually several things in here. These are filters for my wife's camera. And they go on her... Uh, Nikon or Canon, I forget what they are. Uh, I think it's Nikon. And they screw on the end of your camera. Some of you have this uh, in social media, uh, and I've been, I played with it a little bit. Maybe on a Zoom session, you can have this filter that you would turn on, and a filter would maybe make your background um, look like the Grand Canyon. Or you have a filter that you have now. I was playing this on my iPhone the other day when I was FaceTiming someone, and you can actually make your face like these animals, and while you're FaceTiming on something, you look like a zebra or whatever. It's a filter. Well, Jesus Christ is our filter, and it helps us distinguish, know what is truth and what is error. So this one right here is a XTI Pro Series multi coded digital UV filter for a 52mm, I'm assuming millimeter. This one, so whenever you put that on, you filter the UV rays. This one is a Pro, uh, XTI Pro Series multi coded digital FLD filter for a 52 millimeter lens, I'm assuming. Um, 
Uh, this one right here, so when you put it on, it, uh, it, it, whatever, it filters the FLD, and probably someone that's smart, or maybe you just look it up on the internet and know what that stands for. Then this one is a Pro Series multi-coated digital CPL filter for a digital. And the cool things about these filters is if you put them on, they give you different effects. In fact, I'm going to walk these right up to your camera. So you can see them right here. Let's see here. Someone give me a thumbs up if I'm getting these right. See this one right here and this one right here. So if you look through this, it kind of the whole entire background looks like that. I just changed the background. And this one right here, if I put it in the camera, now it looks like purple, pinkish. You take it away, see, A, A, and I'm way like you probably are looking at my nostrils right now. So these are filters. And when you put them on your camera, they filter in or out certain things, and you can actually screw them together, and you can actually put all these filters together somehow. I'm not sure. Probably some pro. And so you can filter all those things at once. Do you know what Jesus Christ is for us? Jesus Christ is the filter by which we can distinguish truth from error. We can filter out all the error and understand and what is truth? Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? And you know what? Jesus was standing right in front of him, and the answer is, I am. Jesus is truth. So teens, if you want, and, and adults or whoever is listening, if you want to know what the truth is, you, get, you have to get to know and look at things through the filter. Well, how do we do that? I mean, do we take Jesus down, you know, somehow and make him into a telescope? <laughs> do we put him on the end of our 55 calendar or whatever, millimeter, uh, is that how we do it? You know how we do that? You know what Jesus is called? He's called the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you want to know what truth, if you want to distinguish truth from error, you have to get to know Jesus Christ. He's the filter. How do we get to know Jesus Christ? Well, he's the Word of God. So the more we get to know the Word of God, the greater, the better we're going to filter. If I was a... a, a you know, photographer, I probably know what, what these things are used for and how to use them very effectively. I'm not a photographer, and I don't know how to fil use those filters. Uh, I barely can use the filters on my phone that are dummy-proof. But Jesus is the filter by which we know truth from error. Teenagers, how well do you know Jesus? How well do you know the Word of God? The seven things that we have learned is this. Children of God know that they have eternal life. Secondly, children of God know when they pray according to God's will, their prayers are answered. Thirdly, children of God know that they are sinless. Fourthly, children of God know that the wicked one cannot touch them. Fifthly, children of God know that they are of God and that the world is wicked. Sixthly, children of God know that Jesus Christ has come. Seventhly, children of God know that that Jesus Christ is the means by which we know truth. And the bonus is the very last verse in 1 John chapter number 5. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen! That's what the very last word of the, book, the chapter says. Amen. Here's the bonus, teenagers. As John wraps this all up, this is the very end of 1 John. The very last thing he tells them, he says, little children... Keep yourselves from idols. We must actively guard against allowing idols into our lives. Teenagers, actively guard against allowing idols into our lives. We should not have American Idol. We should have God Almighty. And there are a lot of people that are in this world that worship a tribute attribute worth, that's what we're talking about worshiping, we attribute worth to a lot of things. A lot of teenagers have pictures of stars up in their room, a lot of pictures have all kinds of things up there that they, that they are saying, listen, I like this person for whatever reason, yet those same people don't have a scripture up in the room, they don't have a Bible in the room. Um, understand, we should have one thing we worship and a, a tribute worth to, and that's God Almighty. Father in heaven, Lord, I pray that you would work Undoubtedly, there are some people that will hear this in the future or perhaps even now that have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, if they have not done that, I'm asking that they would just take time right now to become a child of God. Lord, because then they can know they have eternal life. Father, I pray for those that are saved, Lord, that are going to watch this, that are alive with us right now, Lord, that they would take these things, 
and applied them to their hearts. Maybe they haven't known some of these things, and maybe they have uh, at one time known it, and now, Lord, they've let it, uh, they've forgotten it. Lord, I, lastly, I just pray, as John did, that, Lord, the children of God that are listening would keep themselves from idols in this day and age. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as I said, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please do so. Just put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Uh, remember those seven things. Also, if you just uh, hang around after this ends for a few minutes, our pastor will be on, and he's going to be live streaming. It'll be great. Uh, we're glad you're here. Have a wonderful night, and we'll see you next time.